Love and hate are fundamental forces of existence, but in reality, there is only one force, the force of life. What? So, love and hate are fundamental forces of existence, but in reality, there's only the force of life. So, do these exist in reality or not? Because the context of that statement makes no fucking sense. To deny one of these forces of existence is to deny the true nature of life. Take note of the attraction and repulsion of the electron and proton, the forces of magnetism, etc. Now imagine a world where there was only attraction but no repulsion. Nothing would ever move. Okay. What does that have any fucking thing at all to do with what you just said? Without opposing forces, there would be no life. Does that mean that we should be hateful randomly? You know, I think what I dislike the most about your presentation is the intentional obfuscation of disconnected ideas. None of these things have anything to do with each other fundamentally. First you start talking about love and hate, and then we're on to physics, and then should we hate randomly? Like, th th this, there's no logic to connect any of these things. You're, you're basically setting up obfuscated, disconnected ideas as a hyperbole to lead into the ultimate topic that you want to discuss, and it's kind of a way to pull in new viewers who aren't used to hearing this wild shit. They think they're going to get one thing, they ultimately end up getting something else. Ugh, I... I really hate that. Hate is going to be a big theme with this video. No, it means that hate is a tool, like anger is a tool. We use both positivity and negativity. We synthesize the polarities. Ugh, polarization is polarization. Hate and negativity is hate and negativity. You can't just take the meanings out of words that are inherent to them and then make them into a tool to use whatever you want them to be used for, like... Again, logic and reason, huh? Yeah, if we take the definitions away from words, their inherent meaning, they can mean anything we want them to. If I want to reassign arbitrarily the word anus to have the meaning that we attribute to screwdriver, then okay, hold on, I'll fix that outlet over there. I just got to go get my anus out of the toolbox. <laughs> it, it, it makes no sense to do. But in this particular context, you're leading into territory I don't like. Especially when you say that you want to utilize hatred and negativity as a tool. A tool to do what? Hmm? Forget everything that you know about love and hate, even the words themselves, and all the baggage and judgments that come along with them. Look at love as simply a unifying function, and hate as a separating function, and the force of life as the interplay and movement of unification and separation. To use only the unifying force, is false enlightenment, and to deny the force of life, which is both of these. True enlightenment is to synthesize the fundamental forces of life and utilize them in healthy ways. Love is a unifying function, while hate is a separating function. True enlightenment is about using the unifying function to create a healthy society, but also wielding the force of separation and being not afraid to hate violence, sexism, racism, and homophobia. Oh, okay. I'll use the thing that created all of those as a tool against the things that are created only by hate and negativity. You really can't, at this point, be listening to the shit that you're saying before you say it. You cannot use gasoline to put out a fire, okay?
Yeah, you shouldn't deny the reality that there are two different existent forces of how people get along in this world. Either you do or you don't. And to just say that we need to live by some arbitrary standard where everything is fucking cotton candy, rainbows, and placid perfectness is insanity. That's the SJW's ideal world, where you're living in a padded cell, all negative thought is a crime, and if you don't live by the status quo, well, Jesus Christ, we might as well get you the fuck out of society. I mean, no wonder they all want to be communists, but that aside, I don't like this. I don't like the idea that you're trying to take the inherent negativity, the inherent prejudice of, of hate away from it to say that, oh, well, once you do that, you can't put it back. If you, like, this is so fucking stupid to me. This is profoundly stupid to me. Everything you described is a form of hatred. You cannot use prejudice against prejudice while being prejudiced against the prejudice, okay? You have to convince them that being prejudiced is a wrong way to be. You have to convince people that being a homophobe is fucking close-minded and ridiculous. You have to convince people that being horrifyingly racist is fucking unbelievably uneducated, it's unbelievably close-minded, it's unbelievably simple-minded, and it shows that their world experience and, and world view is incredibly limited by their own self-imposed blinders. Just throwing hate at people like that is not going to fix anything. It's not how shit like that works. Yeah, I hate the fuck out of the videos you make, and I hate the fuck out of you for making them, but I'm not just throwing random tirades of hate into a camera so people can synthesize only the negativity. I'm trying to convince the people that watch my videos and people that just drift across the videos that I make on YouTube that this is not a good way to think. They're being misled, essentially the people that are following this, into thinking that this is like a profound, you know, well thought out philosophy he's got going on here, like a fucking ideology you really want to be part of. No, you cannot throw gasoline on a fire and hope to put it out. As I said earlier, shit don't work that way. And no matter how much flowery fucking language you use to try to describe this, it's essentially what you're saying. That's what you want to do. Fuck me. We are given hate as a separating function. And that's all it is. It's our tool. And we must use this separating function to be able to remove violence, sexism, and homophobia so that we are free to utilize the unifying function to create a healthy society. You know, this is almost getting into the territory of someone arguing that if I did communism, I'd do it the right way. And I say that because that's the same mentality espoused here. You want to get rid of all the bigots and all the homophobes and all the assholes of the world by being bigoted and assholish towards them for their bigotry and assholishness. But you see, that creates what's called the equality paradox where you're trying to get rid of all the unequal people to make a net equal society, but you're using an inequality to the unequal to try to get equality, and you get no equality of outcome. It's just nothing but a paradoxical loop of, well, okay, now that we've gotten the main tiers of shittiness out of our society, where there are no more racists, no more homophobes, no more transphobes, no more sexists, no more murderers, rapists, uh, killers, child molesters, all fucked up, you know, parade of horribles that you could imagine, what next? I mean, we're not creatures that just function like, okay, we've gotten the arbitrary checklist of bullshit done now. No, you don't just stop there. Where do you go from there? Then what? You, do you start policing, you know, small little intimations of, of people's behavior, you know, small little elements of their personalities? Do you, you start policing thought? I mean, you are not going to ever make a utopia on this planet. I hate to burst your fucking ego-inflated bubble here. It's never going to happen. It's a ridiculous goal to try to accomplish. We as beings do not function in a way that could ever create civilization in the sense of making a utopia, ever. 
It's always going to be a warring shithole. But we try to make it at least the least fucking horrible one we can hope to get. There are always going to be injustices. There are always going to be fucked up things that happen in this life that aren't fair. Okay? I mean, it's like, what happened in your life? Did somebody really tell you, oh, you know, life's supposed to be fair? Because that person needs to be punched in the fucking face for telling you the biggest mistruth of all time. You know, it's not that we shouldn't strive to try to attempt world peace. We should. In the pursuit of it, we just end up making things a little bit better every day for ourselves. But to actually think that such an ultimate goal would ever be realized is kind of childish and stupid. Because it'll never happen, sadly. We use the unifying function to cultivate all these healthy attributes and the separating function to remove that which is cancerous and eating at the health and growth of our society. I don't like the fact that I can't tell whether or not you mean this society out here we all live in or some weird Guyana-like insular society that you're attempting to build. The fact I can't tell whether or not you mean one or the other it bothers me. And again, you can't throw gas on a fire hoping to fix everything. If you do make your own weird little Jonestown, I'm gonna laugh my ass off when it falls apart from inner turmoil, like most goth clubs seem to these days, right after about three weeks of it being around. You guys really like your drama. Like a lot. There is nothing intrinsically wrong with separation and unification, they're two aspects of the one force of life, like shadow and light, creation and destruction. Oh my god. I almost feel like I'm in that scene in Donnie Darko where he has to explain to his teacher that there's more to life than love and fear. Well, there's more to life than love and hate. You're taking the most two polarized extremes of human experience and saying, well, that's it. Yeah, there is nothing intrinsically wrong with unifying or separating, okay, I get that, but to just limit the whole of human experience to either black or white is ridiculous. It's closed-minded as hell. Like, for a guy who wants people to have an open-minded perspective of life, you have the most closed-minded view of life ever. You know, I get that the nature of our law is built, essentially, around black and white definitions of things, and that's really to account for how conniving and backstabbing and shitty people as individuals can be. It's why the rule of law kind of bypasses the, you know, uh, impositions of the individual almost entirely, okay? So, really, that's why a lot of our law is kind of unjust and, like, really fucked up. And on that basis, if you're building a society around just this black and white, closed-minded, I don't give a fuck nature of rule, it's never going to work if you're wanting to make it better than what you're living in currently. It'll never happen. Like I said, world peace, as you're trying to describe it, the utopia, already never going to happen. It's something more efficient than what we currently have then will also never happen because you're basing it on the modeled inefficiency of what you're currently living under, and it is because of that just, you know, it's either based on good intention or bad intention bullshit, okay? There is an entire gray area full of all kinds of different outliers that are then, by your model, just wiped out entirely because of this, and, uh, damn, my neighbor takes heavy steps. You hear that? That's what all that shit is. I gotta go up there one day. I wonder if he's got a good mosh pit going on up there. Using them incorrectly, suboptimally, in an unenlightened, unwise, unhealthy way, is when the problems arise. Doing communism correctly decreases the amount of oppression the individuals living under the communistic entity will have to endure. <sighs> One must synthesize and utilize both polarities in a healthy way guided by the violet crown of reason and the highest wisdom. So many falsely enlightened New Agers talk about unifying light and dark and that we should utilize all the aspects of reality.
Why would a person think that there's more to life than just black and white? You know, everything that you're doing and, and everything that you're saying is a New Age philosophy. I mean, you, you know what New Age is, right? Y you know that you fully fit into that category, right? No matter how much you'd like to say that you don't, it's what you are. And essentially, you're saying the same thing that they're saying, except all you're doing is then limiting the entirety of human experience to just you know, good or bad, or good or bad, or whatever. Whatever side of the screen you prefer good and bad to be on. It's the same argument, just <laughs> stuck in a really fucking tunnel-visioned narrow frame. Why am I doing this with my hands? I don't even have 3D enabled on this fucking thing, because I don't have a camera that films in 3D. Ooh! <laughs> but do they? No! They're hypocrites. They call themselves light workers and ignore the shadow. They say one thing, but then they do the exact opposite. Boy, I wonder who the fuck that sounds like. Do they stand up to the hateful Abrahamic religions? No, they accept them, and by doing so, they're aiding the propagation of sexism, racism, homophobia, and the mental child abuse that these religions contain. Or it's due to the fact that a lot of these people don't share your closed-minded ass, tunnel-visioned ass, untraveled and unexperienced ass view of the world and people. A lot of New Age beliefs I think are fucking ridiculous. I'll be honest, let me rub crystals all over my body and recharge my soul energy. Okay, whatever. Whatever floats your fucking boat. Don't shove any of these motherfuckers down my throat. We'll have... No problems getting along. And the same thing goes for people of all kinds of other faiths out there. People believe in whatever they want to believe and to assume that you're going to use this bullshit to homogenize the thought process of eight fucking billion people on this planet is... Well, I think it's fucking hilarious, to be honest with you. It goes to show me how little you know about the world you fucking live in. And your unwillingness to accept that you're ultimately just wanting people to think the way you do to make yourself maybe a little bit more comfortable in having this closed-minded of a worldview. You stereotype whole groups of people all over the fucking place, all the fucking time. Because you think that somehow that's a valid way to look at people. That the stereotypes about them are the realities behind them. That all Satanists are nothing more than a bunch of fucking goat head worshipping baby sacrificers. Because apparently some people still live in the middle of the fucking 1980s during the height of the Satanic Panic era. You think that all Christians across the board are just a bunch of fucking racist, Trump-supporting, homophobic fucking dipshits that are firebranding Estes Perkel types. You think that every New Ager out there is nothing more than a fucking crystal-rubbing, fucking weird, like, madame, fucking crystal ball, fucking weirdo. And I'm just sitting here watching you state shit like this, like, you really don't know fucking shit about anybody. You've never really taken the time to actually get a fucking good grip on the world around you. That's the only way you come to these fucking conclusions. That's the only way you come to this idiotic idea that life is nothing more than good and bad. And there's no fucking outlying rationality in between these fucking polarized extremes as to why people end up becoming the way they end up becoming, why they do the things they do, or anything else anywhere near that vicinity, really. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. And two deny that everything you're saying and doing here falls into the category of new age equally hilarious because that's exactly what it is at this point the video starts repeating the shit out of itself for about the next nine minutes or so and i'm not going to bore you all to death with that so uh yeah 
There's that. I will make a small response to a small point he makes about how Nazis and commies and school shooters, for some reason, all don't understand how unity works, therefore their utilizing hatred as a tool went awry. First off, dipshit, Nazis and commies were trying to accomplish the exact same thing that you're stating you want to try and accomplish here. It's just that it always turns out that way when people try to do that shit. School shooters are people that are severely mentally troubled and don't seek help due to their either being permanently stuck as an edgelord or coupling that with the fact that society stigmatizes against these people heavily, de-incentivizing them from ever seeking help on their own or anybody doing anything else other than making the joke that, oh, he's going to be the school shooter one day. At that point, they're stuck in this repetitive loop of why the fuck shouldn't I, and then we all cry a big fucking river over the next Columbine happens, pretending that, oh shit, what do we do? How can we stop this? I don't know, maybe if we gave a fuck! But that's for another time. Regardless, and I like how by doing that, shut the neighbor upstairs up. Sorry. I'm going to hang this one up here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, like the video, subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and I'll catch you on the flip side. See you around. If you made it this far and you enjoyed this video, thank you very much. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you haven't done so already, like this video and subscribe to this channel. It helps me to grow my channel and expose my content to a much larger audience than it's already getting out to. If you want to support my online content in other ways, feel free to check out any of the links you see on the screen right now in the description box below and share them with as many people as you'd like. Very soon I'll be starting a Patreon campaign with varying reward tiers or subscribers that will help to grow the ability for me to produce video and music content to a much higher degree than I'm already able to produce it. It is your years of undying support that keeps me here on YouTube and keeps me still creating music. Thank you guys for being here. I'll see you on the flip side. Until next time, take it easy.